Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another Madlands video where today we'll be talking about the map pack and icon management features of this tool. So we will start out with map packs. So if you didn't know already, Madlands has a map pack manager feature. The first video I made out of that should be over here if you want to go check that out. But I will be going through a brief demonstration of what differences are compared to when I first made this. Um, so, basically, the intention of this is to take a whole bunch of individual map script files and put them all together in a map pack for the game to randomly select one uh, in order to play. So, in order to make a map pack, first you need to know where you're getting the map script folders from. So, when you open up Madlands, you will be presented with this table, and this table gets the maps list based on what path you specify over here. So if you want to specify a folder for which to grab the maps you want to put in a map pack, you can just put all the maps you want in a specific folder, copy the path of that folder into this box over here, and you can hit refresh. So since this table is populated using a query, uh, all of the items in that particular folder should be loaded into this table here. Now, the query also formats the title of the map uh, based on some preset formatting that I have put in. Uh, if you want to change that, you can edit the query by uh, hitting Show Queries and then Edit This. And then any uh, formatting modifications you want to make to this you can do that within the query itself, or you could do it manually. But let's undo this to get back to uh, what we want to do here. So when you have all the maps loaded that you want to use, you'll need to make sure a handful of columns are populated. Uh, most of these are going to be populated by themselves. Some are not necessary for map packs, and they're only necessary if you were doing work with icons, uh, which we can talk about later. And some of these columns are completely optional, like for example this category column, but we can talk more about that later. So once you have included all the files that you want in the map pack, in order to build the map pack, you can just hit generate map pack. And that should put all of your maps uh, in, this, in a single script. So first we start off with the random structure to determine the percentage chance that any given map will be selected. And then after the random structure, we have just the code. If this map is selected, then we have the code for that map. Now, in order to copy from Madlands into an RMS file, you can just hit the copy map pack range and you can paste it into a map script like this. Now, I'm not going to test this uh, right now because there are a couple other things that I wanted to talk about first. So one of the things that hasn't always been part of the map pack is this category column. So this is an optional thing that you can put in the table. And the purpose of this is to toggle on and off certain categories of maps based on what you want to play. So for example, if we want to go up to uh, this map script, we can see that of the 235 maps that I have in this collection, we have 94 of them, which are classified as open land maps, 34 closed land, 71 hybrid, 6 water, and 30 nomad. Now, you don't have to categorize the maps the same way I do. Uh, you can choose whatever categories you want, but essentially what this is intended to do is, let's say, for example, I, wanted, I did not want to play a water map. What I can do is I can comment out this definition and it should filter out water maps from the available maps to choose from. So if we take a look at the random structure, we have open land is true, closed land is also true, hybrid is true, but water is false. So if we go to the else case for water, we can see nomad is true. So it will select from the open land packs, the closed land pack, the hybrid packs, 
in the Nomad Pact, and it will not have any probability that the Water Map Pact will be selected. And if we scroll down, we should be able to see that the sub packs are now grouped together based on their category. So Open Land 1 um, is the first sub pack for which all of these maps are open land maps. We have a closed land category, and the number of maps that can fit in a certain subcategory is determined by the sub pack limit over here. So that's a nice feature to have. And now the other thing that I wanted to mention at this point was that once we generate the map pack, we can go back to the table and we can see that some of these columns are highlighted. And the reason why some of these columns are highlighted is because we have enabled the checking of parsing errors. Now, checking parsing errors is a feature of this map pack manager. And first, I'm going to say what this is not. This is not a syntax checker. So if you want something that checks syntax, you can use um, Visual Studio Code, and I made a video about that uh, at an earlier time, so you can check out that. So this relies on your script having proper syntax in order to try and see if there may be some parsing errors that will cause problems in your map, even if it's proper syntax. And this will be easier to see if we take a smaller selection. So to demonstrate what this is supposed to do, I've made a map pack of a much smaller sample size. So right now we have only two maps. The first map is called Mystic Creek, and the second is called Nagari. So those are the only two, and for reference, Mystic Creek looks like this, and then Nagari looks like this. So if we go back to our small uh, map script, we have we don't have a random structure, we just have a straight up defined Mystic Creek, so we would always expect Mystic Creek to be generated. So if we go to the test, we can see that it looks like it was successfully able to generate Mystic Creek, and we can keep doing that, and that seems like it keeps on working no matter how many times we generate. Now, if we change this to say, instead of always selecting Mystic Creek, we always select Nagari, what does that do? See, it generated a blank. And this is something that can happen in your map, even if the syntax is all proper. Now, in any given map, but particularly in map packs, you're going to be having a lot of dead branches. So, for example, um, this whole case of Mystic Creek is going to be a dead branch because Mystic Creek is not true. So what we want to happen is that anything in this branch of Mystic Creek is going to be ignored. But the way RMS works is it doesn't necessarily ignore all that. It still has to parse through all the code we have in here to know when to end this if or whether there is an else if to check. And the content of the code in the dead branch can actually have an effect on the map if we're not careful. So when RMS is parsing through a script, it basically takes all of our defined strings and turns them into their equivalent ID. So for example, it will read building blocker one as a string. And since that equivalent ID is 605, it'll just read a 605. We can read in Gaia upgrade unit, which is the equivalent of negative four, so RMS will just read a negative four. And RMS does this, and depending on the context of what came before, the effect amount, it can properly interpret that as something it's supposed to do. And we can run into problems when we have conflicting constants, because besides the default constants here and the custom constants that we define here, there are other tokens in RMS that will have equivalent IDs to things that we may define. Now, in our particular case, what's causing this problem is this defined constant right here. If we look at ATTR radius one, we can see that that equivalent ID is number three. And if you didn't know already, the RMS token if is also ID number three. 
So what happens is, since this is a dead branch, it's going to read through all of these constants, but it will not define them because we're in a dead branch. And it will get to this point and say effect percent. This is something you can properly interpret. Gaia set attribute is a global constant, which you can properly interpret. But building blocker one has not been defined at this point because we are in a dead branch. It read these, but it did not execute them. So this is the point where we have a quote unquote syntax error because building blocker is unknown at this point. So, th so at this point, the parser has lost its marbles and it reads this as number three without being in the context of being an argument of effect percent. And reading this with no context whatsoever reads it as, as opening an if branch. Now, in order to fix issues such as this, we need to make sure that the constants which are causing us problems are defined regardless of whether or not we are in a dead branch or not. So if I take this constant and I move it up here so it's no longer in the dead branch of Mystic Creek, we can see that Nagari is now properly able to generate. Now, on the note of making sure all your constants are defined, it's also very important to know that in RMS, you cannot redefine a constant after it's already been defined. So, for example, I have a constant declaring ground as 9, which is grass 3, and then another constant re trying to redefine it as 6, which is dirt. So if I set the base turn of the map to be ground, what actually happens? You can see that even though the last interpretation of this constant was supposed to be 6, since we defined it as 9 up top, it will stay 9 and it cannot be redefined. So in cases like these, where we have problematic constants that need to be defined outside of the overall random structure, it's very important that whatever constant you defined is not used in another map with a different ID. Now, if we were to go back and look at this table again, and we scroll down to Mystic Creek, we can see that the error that we just took a look at is highlighted in this table as being a potential parsing error. And we'll call this out as a potential parsing error, and the, and the specific lines in the particular map where that potential parsing error occurred. So if we go up to the top here, the most problematic tokens that can cause problems in map, maps are supported. So you can filter out some of these if you would like. And if we keep looking through uh, the table here, we can see that there's quite a handful of those for which that is the case. Now, not all of these are going to be causing parsing errors because some of the constants in question are always defined. For example, water and shallow, we would not expect to be causing a parsing error here because these constants are defined always in random map.def. Map so if we were parsing through this line, there would be no situations in which one of these constants would be unable to be interpreted. So if we want to eliminate some of the false positive errors that may show up, first thing we can do is we can tell Madlands what constants are globally defined in random map.def. So if you know where random map.def is, you can tell Madlands where it is. And then for each of the constants that are globally defined, it will store those and it will recognize that these will not be causing parsing errors and it will not highlight them in the table. So if we go over to where random map.def is normally located, which is over here. I can paste that uh, path in. And then if we already know what custom constants that we are going to be globally defining in our map script, we can put that in this table over here so we can eliminate false positive errors over there. So 
These are the custom constants that are going to be globally defined in all cases. You can see building blocker one is on that list, which is the one we just looked at. And if I put those in this table, then any of these constants that would otherwise be causing parsing errors would not be highlighted. So if I were to do this again, it copies all the maps, but it can see we can see that uh, the ones that were highlighted before are not highlighted now because now Madlands knows what constants are defined, so it knows what not to highlight as a potential parsing error. Now, the things that Madlands is able to highlight as potential parsing errors is not necessarily all the parsing errors you could possibly ever run into in any situation. Uh, if you want to know more information, you can take a look at this Zetness article that talks a bit more in detail about parsing errors. But for the purposes of Madlands, what I've supported is, in my experience, the most common problems that I've run into in my experience with map packs. But um, I think we're at a point where we can test this now. So we will copy the map pack range and we will go into the test script and put it there. And then also we will make sure that any of the custom constants that need to be globally defined so that they avoid causing parsing errors, that we define those as well. So it should so at this point we should be choosing randomly among all of the available maps. All right. So what we can see here is that it randomly selected the map, which is Great Wall. So uh, I know that this is a land map. So if I want to make sure that these categories are working, what I can try to do is I can try to comment out or, yeah, this is a closed land category. So I can comment out closed land. And if I would, would restart the game, I would expect not to get the same map, even though it's going to be the exact same seed. Because if we redo the seed based on the fact that closed maps are not enabled, we, we should not be able to select Great Wall. So let's restart. And we can see that uh, when we filter out closed land, it happened to select a hybrid map for us this time, which is Crescent. So if I wanted to filter out hybrid maps also, see, we can see that we've generated an open land map now, which is mountainside. We can see mountainside is part of the open land category. So this is among the available remaining categories to choose from randomly. Okay, so we can put this back to where it was before with everything enabled. So one of the other things that I want to talk about regarding the map pack generator is that if we take a look uh, over here, we can see that as soon as it defines uh, the specific case for a certain map, it adds this line here setting the value of a map resource to a specific number. See, this is the map Alps. It sets the value to 4. It finds the map Altai and sets the value to 5, and then so on, incrementing for every single map. Now, this map resource is defined at the top, and that's set to 18. So what is resource 18? If you look at the UGC guide, this resource does absolutely nothing. It's an unused resource. But the benefit of this is, is that I can use it for whatever I want. So it's been a problem with map packs since the beginning of map packs is that anytime you have a map randomly selected, you can't necessarily tell what it is because it just says custom over here. If you didn't know that this map was called Mountainside, it wouldn't tell you on its own. And that's what this uh, map resource is for. 
because once we set map resource in the RMS, what we can do then is if you're willing to include excess scripts in your map, uh, where do I have this? What an excess script can do is it can read that particular value of that resource and return the name of the map based on that resource. So in, these, in this excess portion, I have the constant map resource set to 18. And then based on what the RMS script set the value of resource 18 to, I can read that and get the appropriate name from that string. So if we were to include that excess script at the top here and say, we could restart the game. We can see that as soon as we start the game, based on the value of resource 18, the access will read that and it will chat the appropriate name of the map so that we know what it is, uh, even if we didn't know that, know that before. Now, regarding the map pack generator, there's just a couple of last things that I wanted to mention. And these are things that I never run into personally with my own maps, but on occasion, if I am working with a map made by somebody else, there may be some complications that Manlands can potentially also handle. So every so often I would run across a map that, with a certain encoding for which Manlands could not properly interpret the line delimiters, so it would read the entire map script as one line. And if that were to happen, I don't have an example of it handy, but it would produce, it would highlight that in the table after it's done, and it would produce another error that says it read the entire map as one line, and you would probably want to use this cure files macro in order to reformat it. So if that were to happen, um, say in this map over here, um, we would just enable that particular one and we would say cure files which would reformat this particular map script into something where madlands can properly interpret the line delimiters it's a fairly time consuming macro if you do it with a whole lot of maps at the same time which is why it's not automatically included in the process and then and then the other thing is this column over here which says copy mode so there are two copy modes for Madlands. The first one is line by line. And for 99% of maps, this is going to be the best case. But I've run into a couple of maps in the past that have tens of thousands of lines in a single script, in which case reading it line by line is very slow. So a different method would be required. Now, there really shouldn't be any reason to be setting this to anything other than default, but basically, just so you know what it is, is that the default method of copying maps to a map script is using this line by line method. But if the lines of the map exceed this threshold, have that set to 10,000, it will set it to copy and paste mode, which is in theory faster if the map has so many lines in it. Okay, so we will re-enable all of these things. And, um, so I guess the next half of the map pack manager is focusing on updating individual maps based on changes you make to the overall map pack. So there are a couple cases if you're updating maps that it's easier to make changes in the overall map pack as opposed to in the individual maps. So let's say for example that some of these maps were pretty old and some of the sheep were spawning pretty far away bit farther than we would like. So if this was a problem that was happening in multiple maps, we could just uh, find something that says sheep. And we can say, see that in this case, the min distance to players is nine. And if that was happening in a lot of different places, I could just say for every min distance to players nine, I can change it for min distance to players eight. So I will replace this one, and it 
found the next one that for the sheep min distance players nine i'll just replace this one i don't even care what map this is I, I just want the sheep to be closer so i just hit replace and replace and replace and certainly if i just replace all i don't even care what maps those were in it's just good to have the sheep closer and if i wanted to update all of the individual maps based on the changes i made here i can just copy the content of all of this put it back into the editor tab first let's clear and then if i were to hit this update individual maps macro all the changes we made in the editor will be transferred over to all the individual maps in this folder over here and to show how it works we don't even need to have all of these maps in here you just hit this update individual maps macro based on all of the content that was in the editor tab it will populate this folder with the content of each individual map so this update individual maps macro is assuming that the map pack was created with the map pack manager in the first place so for example it expects the script to start in a1 and it, it expects to find each of the individual map names in column a so it knows when the next map starts so it knows you know which section of the overall script is associated with which map so that's an important thing to know now what you just saw me do which was hit a mass replace for everything in the script without checking for it uh, is probably not a smart idea it's usually a good idea to check what you're changing before you actually change it but just for demonstration purposes we can just go into this map here and it properly populates acropolakes with all of the uh, code that is supposed to be associated with acropolakes and if we look at where should this be uh the hurdle uh now where previously this was min distance to players nine it's now min distance to players eight so the change we made is successfully transferring to the individual map so that about does it for the map pack manager aspect of madlands and now i just wanted to take just a small bit of time to talk about the icon management because there really aren't that many changes to the icon generator compared to when I first introduced it. You should be able to watch that video over here. But um, just to give a brief summary is that what the icon manager is supposed to do is it's just supposed to take the capture age image such as this. It's supposed to crop out the minimap, reformat it, and apply some template to it to get rid of the background. So if I were to say generate single, I can, it'll first prompt me to select the capture age image. And it'll ask me where to put it. I'll say put it here. And it will uh, grab that minimap, resize it, reformat it based on the overlay template that I chose. So in contrast to the way Madlands worked previously, now overlay images are referenced from within Madlands itself, as opposed to being a separate file that it had to reference. So in order to reference the overlay template that's in this overlay templates sheet, you just need to select the picture and give it a name. And then whatever name that is, you put that over here so Madlands knows which overlay uh, image to use. And then also, uh, something new is that uh, Madlands now is that now you can customize the size of the resulting icon uh, for purposes of saving file size. And then in addition to generating a single icon, you can generate a list of icons if you want also. So that's what this is for. If you specify where all of your source images are, it will look for this image name in that folder and it will use this as the capture age image for which to extract that icon so i'm not going to do all 235 at once 
So I'll just do this sample of 10 and say generate list. Well, first we'll cancel this. First we'll clear the icon worksheet and then we will generate list. So it was able to generate a, an icon for all of our maps that we had enabled. There still isn't a really clean way from getting the uh, resulting icons out of Excel and into their own uh, particular PNG files. So the way I typically do that is I save this worksheet as HTML, select the only the sheet, and I can call it something. And then as that exports, we should be able to see, based on what I call it, I call it icons. Eventually you'll see this folder icons files and then all of the images will end up in here eventually. And then the last feature of uh, the icon manager is generating JSONs. So normally icons work by having a PNG uh, image file with the same name as the map you want to represent. So if you have a lot of maps that can sometimes be very cluttered. So if you want to do something that I do, which is put the icons in a subfolder over here, you can avoid cluttering uh, your overall folder by using a JSON to reference the maps in your main folder with that subfolder. So um, for all the maps that we have enabled in our table over here, what we can do when we generate the JSON, if we know all of our resulting icons are in the same folder, we can say from folder, and then we can say generate JSON. It will select a source folder for the icons. Right now I have uh, icons here. And if we take a look, we have 235 items in here and then 235 maps active in the list over here. If the map names in that folder you selected didn't already match the names of the map scripts that, which are enabled in our list, you could rename them if you wanted, but uh, I'm going to say no for now. And it's going to ask me a place to save the JSON file. If I save this uh, over here, we'll just call this dash one. And this should just produce us a simple text file. Which basically references the map script to a particular icon. So for whatever map it finds, it will say this map is associated with the subfolder name, Mad Random, which is specified over here, and then the image name itself. So as long as the JSON matches one of the maps that you have in your folder, it should properly assign all of the maps to their appropriate images. And if we open up the map browser, we can see that uh, maps that were specified on our list have their icons mm -hmm. properly referenced to them. So I think that does it for the latest version of Madlands in terms of the map packs and the icon management tools. So hopefully you guys have found this helpful and thanks for watching.